So I had convinced my my father that Queen was a Christian band. <laughs> 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 to the point where my dad's a soccer our soccer coach. And so he would bring uh, on a cassette tape at, at, you know at the time, he'd bring this jam box out to our practices and play another one bites the dust. It was our theme song. And he'd be like, you know, he thinks he's talking about the devil or something. Somebody, the devil's going about the dust. He, he hadn't listened to anything. And so and, and, and we, so we go play the game. We'd win. We'd lose. And we go to this little pizza joint afterwards. They had a jukebox in the deal. My dad, go play, hit it up on the deal. Another one bites the dust. Come back, give a team speech. Like, hey, boys, we'll get them next time, you know. They're going down. They're going to bite the dust next time. Devil like that. Um, I'm sitting in church on a Sunday evening. And this traveling evangelist is coming through town, speaking the ills of secular music and how it's warping the minds of the young children today. And the first song out of the, <laughs> to, to, to show this backward masking, secret messages being being put into these young, impressionable minds is Queen, another one by Stutz. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm never- We're here today on Behind the Tunes here from the Visible Music College Studios with David Crowder. Check him out at CrowderMusic.com. David, thanks so much for being here today, man. Abs- absolute privilege, man. Glad to. Now you're a you're a Wacoan or Waken or a Woken. I, that, that? Well, I was there for longer than you know most. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school at Baylor. Yeah. I got I I call I got stuck there for about 16 years. I was a part of a church start. And I uh, was just trying to be helpful. And then it turned into a, then I was on staff there at the church for, as I said, 16 years. And out of that, um, we had a, had a band that was just, the, it was just a bunch of students that started, you know, making music together. And that's sort of how I got into this whole thing. Um, now I'm still, still at it. That's a long time ago. It was back in the late nineties. Well, I was reading up on Waco, Texas before we got on today since I knew you spent a lot of time there. And so we'll, we'll, let's go through some fun facts to see if you know these things about Waco. Tell me about my, tell me about my town. <laughs> Did you know that there is a, the, the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame? Yeah, Not absolutely. Rangers, it's, Rangers. It's, it's one. It's just, it's just one dude. <laughs> it's just the one Ranger. That's all, that's all Waco had time for. No, it's right. And it's, it's actually right on the Brazos River. It's got prime location, prime real estate for that Ranger Museum, that one guy. Have you yeah. been to it? No, I've never been to it. Never no, we, been to it. Next time I've looked at it from a distance and thought, <laughs> man, they got a good spot there. I bet there's a lot of neat things about that guy in there. She yeah, the Texas Rangers. I was on a I was on a plane uh flight. Uh you know, we we travel out of Waco. We always hop on a little sob twin prop plane to Dallas to DFW and connect to wherever we're going. We, we, uh, the first flight was necessary to get to the big city of Dallas, Fort Worth. <laughs> and uh at the time. Uh, we had uh, W. Bush in office, and yeah. he had a ranch right outside of town in Crawford. And so we noticed that they're like, I don't know, five or six uh, very, very uh, intimidating-looking men getting on the plane in front of us, and they're all carrying these cases. And and we get on there, and we're like, hey, hey what do y'all do? And they're like, oh, we're musicians. And you're talking to a band, and I'm like, oh, you are. I've never seen a band <laughs> as fit as you guys. And then I'm like, well, what's in the cases? He's like, that's a keyboard. I'm like, that ain't a keyboard, bro. <laughs> You're a band, that ain't a keyboard. That's a gun, isn't it? He's like, it's a gun. I said, what, you know, free, what, what are you doing? He's like, we're Texas Rangers. I'm like, oh my goodness. So there wasn't just one of those. There were multiple Rangers on our flight. And I thought, this is the coolest, this is the coolest plane I've ever been on. The how Texas funny. Rangers. Yeah, how funny that they're they're trying to sneak one past oh, the band. Like, yeah. I'm oh. like, you are the you're the worst <laughs> undercover policeman I've ever been. I'll bust you. I ain't, I don't know. It ain't no keyboard. It's yeah. too funny. So you got the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame. Right, right. We got 75% that. of the world's Snickers are made in Waco. Mars, yeah. And, and, hey, Eminem Mars right outside of town. It's a, it, They're spitting the candy out. It's a, that's where everywhere. All the candy comes from Waco. You don't know that? You get <laughs> you get Magnolia and Fixer Uppers and you get candy. It's, <laughs> it's a magical land. Yeah, since well, yeah, the heart of well, Texas. there's there's another piece of magic there though, and that is Dr. Pepper, right? Hey man. Dr. Pepper right there. Dr. Pepper, the nectar of the gods. Listen, hey, I lived in the house Dr. Pepper built. Do you know this story? No. Oh my gosh. Me Tell and my wife lived in this little duplex off of campus. 
for like seven years. We couldn't leave because the rent was so cheap. Our rent was like $325 utilities included. Oh I'm like, gosh. we're never going to leave here. This is this is like a <laughs> miracle. It. Yeah, nobody can get this rent. Well, we were out driving around town one day and we see this house and it looks, it's decrepit. It looks like, you know, the cat, where the cat lady lives. And there's a lot of cat, you can tell. Um, and, and so we, there's a realtor sign in the yard though. We call it up. We're not looking because we, we're very happy at our place, but we call it up. This lady shows up. We walk in on the front porch and the front porch is as big as the duplex we've been living in. I'm like, it's massive, <laughs> spacious. And so as she's walking us up there, she says, this house was built in 1886 by a guy by the name of Wade Morrison, who was the corner drugstore owner and invented Dr. Pepper, <laughs> which I said, and this is not how you do this. I said, we'll take it. <laughs> so we bought the house that Dr. Pepper built and we lived in the Dr. Pepper house. And we, so we, re it took some work. It was, uh, it was a fixer upper, speaking <laughs> of those guys. Um, I, I mean, I remember the first night we were there and it rained. Uh, we walk into where the kitchen eventually was and water was just pouring down the wall <laughs> inside the house. And and my wife's looking at me like, what did you get us into? And I go, Hey babe, we got a water feature. That's what I got. That's you. Right. That's a water feature. That's an indoor waterfall, please. I Look got you that. stories. I got Lug you stories. Yeah. Luxury. Yeah. But we went, we wound up converting. There was a barn in the back of the house that we converted into a studio and, and pepper, the mm -hmm. horse lived in the barn. This was Pepper's place. You don't know this lure, but yeah, it was, he was, uh, the guy was in love with a, uh, it was a forlorn in love with a girl from West Virginia and her dad was Dr. Pepper and they never connected. And then he names a beverage after this guy, you know, that kind of prevented yeah. the hookup. If I was, if I was Wade Morris's wife, I'd be like, let it go, bro. This is like, let it go. You know, this ain't helping. You know, that's been tough on the marriage. I didn't know that little love triangle there. I didn't know yeah. that story at all. And then names the pe names the horse after him, names the beverage after him. He, he had issues, bro. Wade Wade had issues. He's working through some hard. stuff. Less, well, listen, we've all been there. <laughs> but, it, but you know, as I was reading about Dr. Pepper, I, I was alarmed to find out the number of times people were like, "Is there's no prune juice in it. I was like, I never even thought about it. Why do you keep telling me there's no prune juice in it? it, it well, uh, yeah, that was well, as, as a rumor. You know, everybody was like, oh, well, Dr. Pepper's got prune juice. You know, it helps. It's, it was more of like a, uh, uh, you know, some some sort of elixir, a health elixir <laughs> yeah. is how it was sold on the yeah. front end. You know, it'll help with the digestives. It's a digestive. And, uh, you know, we don't know. It's 23 flavors. And you can't tell me that one of them may <laughs> or may, it may be prune. I mean, 23 of them out of 23, got got to be pruned in there somewhere. I'm just saying there's a lot of smoke, you know, that people <laughs> yeah. are protesting too much on the whole yeah. prune thing. So yeah. I think you may be right. Yeah. Well, that's our, well, that's our Waco fun that's your facts trivia. for the day. Yeah, that's our fun facts for the day. Well, David, let's go back. You hit a little bit on, you know, how you got started as far as the band and just kind of started playing there, rooted in the church. What about you personally? Where did you start getting into music to begin with? Well, my mom early on, well, we had a piano in the house, and mm -hmm. and uh, when I, you know when you're a kid, it's one of the first things your parent, my parents would be like, "Hey, don't touch the piano," you know. That's for the adult sisters, you know. It's it, and nobody played in the house, so it was like I don't know. We inherited it from somebody, and it's like, <laughs> "Don't touch the piano." That's Uncle, you know, Ernest or something. And of course, when you're a kid and you hear "Don't," that's the first thing you're gonna do. And so I was always getting in trouble for banging on the piano. And, you know, uh, it's very obvious when a kid's banging on the piano, you get <laughs> caught quickly. Um, but at some point, my mom's like, I recognize that song. I think that's the theme of Dallas. <laughs> or something. I don't know what I'm playing. But she's like, I'm not, that's a that's off the TV. And so she's like, man, this little kid's got an ear. We get, we need to get him. We need to get him some, some lessons. I hated it. But she started shoving me to piano lessons and and. Uh, and they, they, they tricked me on the front end. They're like, man, you can learn like the theme from Rocky. And I'm like, okay, I like Rocky. That's great. I'm going to play Eye of the Tiger over and over. That's going to be good. Uh, but she, so I, it, it, it's all her fault for shoving me down that road. As soon as, uh, you know, I became an adult, I was like, um, I don't see this as a, as a potential future for professional. I, I don't see this paying the water bill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but I, I had a hookup. My, what I wanted to do, I wanted to work for my dad. I thought my dad was the coolest dude on the planet. He owned, he owned the insurance agency in Texarkana called Dan Crowder Insurance Agency. All right. And I mean, his office, he had that wallpaper that looks like a forest. Is it like a forest scene behind <laughs> him? He got that phone that has the little shoulder holder. 
So he's doing this. He's <laughs> typing on that computer in MS DOS or something at the time, you know, and <laughs> floppy disks. And I'm like, this guy is cool, you know. So I was giving car quotes at age like 11. I mean, <laughs> we're talking illegal. They thought I was a receptionist and a, and a girl. They're like, how are you doing? <laughs> um, so I, I just that's what my, my since I had that nepotistic hookup, I wanted to take over the family practice. And, yeah. Uh, and I thought it was going to be a great life. And and it was my junior year of college. And I was I, so since I had that going on, I knew I could just st- study and pass the insurance exam. And I thought I'd go off to school. And, and study something fun. And I thought music would be fun. Hmm. It's not fun. Don't go to college. It's like the word. You, all you do is live in a practice room, locked away by yourself, playing <laughs> stuff you don't like over and over. Um, so it wasn't fun. But I was so I was getting my BA, which is a cheap way around in a music degree um, and, and with an emphasis in piano. And and then I was going to go home and work for my dad. And and um, about my junior year, this guy, st- he, he was going to start a church and aimed at college students and just asked me, Hey man, um, we were buzzing. He's like, Hey man, you, you mind helping me out with the music portion of our Sunday morning gatherings? And I was like, that's a terrible idea. Absolutely not. And then he, he's a, he's a preacher through and through, which they're so manipulative. They can get you. To do anything, man. So, you know, I said, absolutely not. And before I know it, that's all I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm finding players. I was, I was just like the MD. I wasn't leading. I was just like, you know, finding players finding material um rehearsing everybody and making sure everybody showed up on a sunday morning and tried to pull something off and given that it was college kids uh half the time people wouldn't show <laughs> on sunday and so i found myself <laughs> having to lead because nobody's around and he's like well you got to do it i'm like man i can't sing bro like this is the worst church to come to man um but that's how it started and then about a year in and, and at the front end we were just basically you know recycling old hymns i just i just mm-hmm. didn't you know uh, um it was, it was it was a lot of people that had grown up in church had a lot of baggage from church mm-hmm. so it felt like a little little community of refugees almost and so i, I didn't want to bring in our camp experiences and these songs that were part of our camp experiences so we were trying to figure out what could we do that that roots us in the ancient that that we were singing we're singing lyrics that have been fully vetted and I thought, man, we can't, if these, these hymns have been around for a bit, I think, I think they've been <laughs> vetted pretty well. So we just started there, but then about a year in, it really felt like we also needed to say something for our organic local experience. And mm-hmm. um, that's where we really uh, started writing. And I was like, well, I'll just give it a shot and see if I can write something. And, and, and it was terrifying and it's still terrifying. You know, you're <laughs> like, man, I'm putting words in your mouth and, and, and things in your chest that, I want to be, you know, true and as accurate as I can um, theologically. And and, uh, so that's that's really how the whole thing got going, though. You know, the number of stories that I hear on this show that begin with there's either a pastor or a youth pastor (laughs) talking you into something that was like, hey, you're going to should do this. Like, I don't want to do it. It's like. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna do it. <laughs> gonna do it. Yeah, that's it. And man. then like the rest is history is so <laughs> funny. Again, Isn't we're that here. great though. Oh, that's it great. is. Well, I and love it, it is. It is important, and it shows. And I, and I usually make this point: is is people see things in other people that we don't often don't see in ourselves. Absolutely, and it's really yeah. really important. Yeah, we're it. here with uh, David Crowder here on Behind the Tunes from the Visible Music College Studios, uh, the youngest insurance agent in the history of the United States. <laughs> Check him out at CrowderMusic.com. David, do you remember the first record you bought with your own money? Yes. Um it was a it was Queen. Ah. Um it was a single. And yeah. so it had an A side, B side. It was another one bites the dust. Ah. And I well no here's here's what okay. happened. Okay. Okay. Um when, growing up, uh all music was great in the house. But then something happened and suddenly some music was fine and other music was not it's, you know and as a kid i'm like i don't know what's going on here but you know we used to have elvis on where did he go you know <laughs> um so only christian music so i had convinced my my father that queen was a christian band <laughs> 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 to the point where my dad's a soccer our soccer coach and so he would bring uh, on a cassette tape at, you know at the time he'd bring this jam box out to our practices and play another one bites the dust it was our theme song and he'd be like you know he thinks he's talking about the devil or something somebody the devil go about the dust he, he hadn't listened to anything and so and, and it, so we go play the game we'd win we'd lose but we go to this little pizza joint afterwards they had a jukebox and deal my dad go play 
hit it up on the deal. Another one buys the dust. <laughs> come back, give a team speech. Like, hey boys, we'll get them next time. You know, they're going down. They're gonna bite the dust next time. Devil, like that. Um, I'm sitting in church on a Sunday evening, and this traveling evangelist is coming through town, speaking the ills of secular music and how it's warping <laughs> the minds of the young children today. And the first song out of the, <laughs> to, to, to show this backward masking secret messages being being put into these young impressionable minds is Queen Another One by Dust. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've never been more terrified. In my, I've, I, that's the hardest I've prayed. I've prayed, God, take me home now. I want to be with Jesus now, or just never let this guy stop talking. Please don't. And my yeah, my dad. I could feel the fury coming from him and you're just was, staring uh, straight ahead like yeah i'm just so. like <laughs> hey but the good thing the upside of that whole evening was i did that is the first time i discovered acdc <laughs> so there was you're a like positive, making notes there was a like, positive like, oh what's like, the oh, other gotta, ones you were like okay. gotta check that one out <laughs> this guy's got it going on oh that's incredible yeah. those are the those are the stories that, that show to me just the incredible humor of god himself <laughs> right there's no way that that's yeah, absolutely happen. he's like i've got him now well, so you mentioned you mentioned Queen being the first album you bought, and then when you made a, a quiet note of ACDC that night, <laughs> who were your influences growing up musically? Um, it was uh, you know, I as I said early on, there was a lot of there was a lot of old school country in the house. Willie Willie and Waylon and the boys, Johnny Cash, huge. Uh, Elvis was big time. My mom, yeah. uh, you never seen a bigger Elvis fan than, mm. than my mom. Um, I remember when he died. Uh, my mom. It came on the radio. My mom pulled over on the side of the road and just started like weeping hard. And me and my brother were in the back seat and we're like, oh no, what happened? She's like, Elvis died. <laughs> I thought the world was over, man. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but so that, you know, old school country was pretty big time. And then, uh, and then it was, you know, as I said, <laughs> Queen became quite influential. <laughs> that rock, rock, Kiss was huge. <laughs> ACDC was huge. Um, Pink Floyd was huge, um, but then when I, by the time I got into college, I was I went down that frat rock stuff, uh, widespread panic, mm -hmm. and, and the Dave Matthews Band. But the the band that I was just enthralled with was Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam okay. was my stuff. Pearl right. Jam and that that whole that whole scene uh, up in Seattle was my my was my jam right there. So All right. you may have just that's about the this. time I started writing music. Where that's what All I was right. into. You may just answer this if you could open up for anybody, dead or alive. Who would it be? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> shoot! It would have to be. It would have to be Eddie Vedder yeah. solo. Eddie yeah. solo, just to be near him on the stage would be cool. Love it again. We're here with David Crowder. Check him out at CrowderMusic.com here on Behind the Tunes from the Visible Music College Studios. David, do you remember the first song you ever wrote? I I do. I didn't really. Uh, um, well, I'll tell you how it went down. Um, it was like I said, I was I was like, let's give it a shot, you know. And so it was a song called You Alone. Mm -hmm. And I I you know, I I'd, I'd been working on it for a while. And so I I my roommate at the time was I grew up with, he was my best friend growing up. He was the son of the music director of the church I had gone to back in Texarkana, Texas, where I grew up. Um knew him I mean, we were just close. And so he knows I'm terrified. I'm like, this is like the scariest thing I've ever done. Like, this could be tragic. I, sh I shouldn't be doing this. And so we do the song. I think it goes great. I'm like, I'm like, that was great. I come off the stage after the deal. We're at lunch. I'm like, bro, what'd you think? And he goes, about what? I'm like, the song. Like, the song I wrote was, you know, scared to do. And he's like, oh, I don't, I don't think you can actually call that a song. Like, you just <laughs> kind of said the same thing over and over. And it was like, what, three chords? Like, I, it's not, I don't think you can call that a song. <laughs> <laughs> so, so i could have just stopped right there you know with that kind of friend encouragement yeah you know? so anyway i don't listen to my friends that's what i learned out that that's what I'm saying. friends, my, are friends are, my friends are ignorant that's what they are they get all better right. friends all right so i assume it's changed a little bit what's your songwriting process like today well it's more collaborative uh you know at the time um for for most of the first um well we we went we wound up with like the worst band name ever we didn't name it we just started traveling here and there and i guess because dave matthews was at the, big at the time we'd be going somewhere and they just were like oh it's the david crowder band and i'm like it's not the david crowder band man uh but we got stuck with that name for a while and uh at that time it was just pretty much me writing everything 
And then at, eventually I was, I was like locking some of the other band guys in rooms and like, don't come out till you write a song. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm feeding you, I'll throw you some ramen Oxygen under the situation. door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was toxic. Um, but, but we, so we, it became more collaborative toward the end. And by the end of it, everybody was, I think, contributing equally to uh, what we were making. Um, but then when I went on this solo Crowder endeavor, um, I'm like, oh my gosh, now it's going to literally be all my fault. But what I've found is it's become way more even collaborative than I was mm. a part of at the time, you know, getting to write with people that I've wanted to write with for a long time. We were just very insular and kind of just were like, hey man, if it's coming from our church, let's keep it coming from our church and not mm. have a lot of outside voices mm -hmm. in it because we were speaking from our organic experience and our journey with God. Um, but, you know, I jumped over to Atlanta, Texas or Atlanta, Georgia and out of texas and and um man it's been a it's been amazing i feel like i've grown as a writer but being around people that are doing this every day day in and day out and um it, it's so that part of it has been amazing so it's very collaborative i feel what i'm doing most of the time is just collecting i feel like i carry, carry like a little pail around and i put stuff in it and when it's yeah. time to come you know into a writing session or something i pull the stuff out and be like okay here's what we got Let's see if there's something that's worth worth uh, scratching at, and and then that's been a blast. I'm having more fun now than I've ever had making music. It's pretty cool. Man, that's great. And like, I gotta ask you a question: Is that a bear behind you? Am I looking oh, at yeah, a, a yeah, bear? Yeah. <laughs> what am I looking at? It's a little bear brick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a Dan, Daniel uh, Ashram is actually an artist that did that. But yeah, it's a bear. It's a that's bear. Really, I know. I just like, need I just need wildlife near me. It's, it's inspiration. It makes this you feel like is, your yeah, this nature. Is the, this is the home studio. This, this is this is in the basement, and I just need you know my I need my toys near. That's right. It's your nature. <laughs> it's so like I'm in. I'm in. You're one with with the world and nature around you. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Well, I'm seeing your I'm seeing your your shelves full of goodness. Yeah. You got, that cowboy thing made my wife happy, man. I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's the biggest. You've never watched football. Till you watch her watch football, <laughs> you're like, oh, that's that's what a fan acts like. Yeah, no piece of furniture sacred. Uh, something's damaged every time. If they'd win more, we'd have uh, less damaged furniture <laughs> right. in the house. You know, that's why you had Half to leave the Dr remotes. Pepper house. She destroyed it. Yeah, <laughs> destroyed your house. That's why there's water <laughs> coming in, honey. You threw the that's remote it. through the ceiling. Tony was watching. Yeah, Tony was watching Sunday football. Is what's wrong. <laughs> Well, David, there's few things like live music. It's one of the best things there is. It's an incredible gift and moments to create it. But there's goofy stuff that happens along the way. Do you have a most embarrassing on stage moment that sticks out to you? Oh man, I mean, I've got a. Those are nightly. I'm not kidding. There's something I'm going to do stupid every night. But one of the worst was we were playing up in uh, in Pennsylvania at this big big festival called Creation Fest, and mm -hmm. and at the time, as, as height, I mean, it looked like it's just a sea of people like 60,000 people or something. And it's the first time I, I think I, I decided it's a good idea for us to, to play how he loves for the first time ever. I had just heard it and I'm like, God, this song's amazing. We should do it. And they're like, okay. Um, <laughs> and so it's the first time I'm ever going to play it out loud. All right. And at the time I had this janky computer and, and it tended to the, the eight, the eight inch that Jack, kind of had a short in it mm -hmm. and if the and if the cable got touched or bumped or anything and it came out it would drop the bit rate of of the of the the programming museum in ableton live and it would drop the bit rate of ableton that means you're not in a real key you're not in 440 <laughs> anymore and and it's a lot lower well i hit the I, I hit i'm playing keys so i hit the first you know down 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 a little little uh uh melody line on the piano and i'm like that sounds awfully low. And then I play it again. And so then I get up to the mic and I'm like, he, he, he is jealous for me. <laughs> it's so low. I can't. I mean, and I look at the band like, oh no, we're in trouble. And the bass player's like, uh uh, we're not in the key. He starts tuning one note, it's one string. He's trying to get that that low string, E string in, into tune or something. The only person that can play with me is a violinist because he doesn't have any frets. Uh -huh. So he's like, you can hear him screeching around trying to find where we are. It was just a disaster, absolute disaster. Hey, but I pushed through. I didn't stop. We just, That's right. Yeah, That's right. yeah. Just, like man, <laughs> we have one dude on a on, on one bass string and a violinist <laughs> screeching around. Uh, poor people. They must. That's the, and that was the stuff. first time you played it. That was the very first time. We still <laughs> you kept play at it, it again. Kept I, yeah, I'm hungry. I got to we get this one right. We're still going. Yeah, uh, undeterred. Again, we're wrapping up here with David Crowder. 
Check him out at CrowderMusic.com here on Behind the Tunes from the Visible Music College Studios. David, I'd like to end with a little rapid fire. You got your game face on? Hey, man, I'm going to get uh, – so these are are these wrong or right answers? Or they're no. Wrong answers? Mm -mm. No. Oh, then I'm going to nail this. You're going <laughs> to kill. You're gonna make, make anything. I'm going right? to get all of them right then. Fair enough. That's <laughs> well, great. well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. What's your favorite junk food? Oh, man. It's, it's fiery Cheetos and pickles, like hamburger deal sliced. It's a particular brand called Best Made. You get me a bowl of Best Made hamburger dill pickles and Safari Cheetos. That's it. Right you eat there. those together at the same those time. Those are together. Those are together. Yeah. Did you see? I mean, the not, movie? you know, it's like one and then one. You know, yeah, it's not yeah, like yeah. I'm not You're making like little like Cheeto rolls out of the pickle <laughs> or anything. I'm, Did you I'm, watch the movie about the uh, spicy? Cheetos? No, I haven't no. yet. How he came up? Yeah, the dude that came up with that. Uh, -uh. pretty good. It's, it's pretty on good. the it's on the to do list. Yeah. yeah. Cool. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Vanilla. <laughs> you, it's you straight up vanilla, man. I don't even. It's mine too. I, I, don't, I don't mess with other stuff. It's yeah. mine too. It's, mine it's too goofy. Can you name one of the seven dwarfs? Yeah, uh, uh, Goofy. No. That's, that's not a, that's not a dwarf. That's a dog. That's a dog. I don't think there's a Goofy. It's a dog that owns a dog. There's a sneezing. There's a sneezing. There's a, dro there's a droopy. No, I don't know. there should be. There should be. No, yeah. you, you got sneezy though. And sneezy's great. If you sneezy. had to change your first name. What would it be? Oh man, I wanted to change my name so badly. I really wanted to. I wanted to be Dale. Dale. It's not Dale more. Crowder. It's not more interesting than David. But I, I, I just there was a there was a, um, a a a friend of my family, my dad, um, that's name was David, and then and then he changed it to Dave, and I thought. You know, as he was older, I was like, "That's still not a good name for a, a, a an older dude." So I'm like, "Man, I'm not, I got to grow into something better." Dale, you can stick with for life. You David, can. It's, just, it's just it's just weak. It's tough. Well, never mind. I was gonna say it's, it was maybe tough to be David in uh in Waco for a while too. <laughs> yeah, well, I, especially when you're starting a church. <laughs> I, I heard that one a lot. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. What color is your toothbrush? It's black, in but it's it's a kind of it's black. It's, it's it's matte black. Yeah, it's it's classy looking. It's classy. Oh, looking. it's classy. You got a classy toothbrush. Yeah, yeah. My 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 wife picked it out. <laughs> it matches the thing it sits in. So that's great. You can't have some blue or green toothbrush in in yeah. you know whatever that thing. You is. can't have a toothbrush that doesn't match the thing. Right. I get it. No. There's the a movie. There's, there's, a vibe, there's vibes going on in the movie about your life. The David Crowder story. What actor would play you? Rocky Balboa. I think he's got another name, but it's got to be Rocky Balboa. Oh, Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester That's Sylvester him. Stallone. He's always he's Rocky to me forever. Yeah. If you could be it any, be, it would basically be, be another Rocky movie. That would be what. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so athletic and yeah. They keep Life. trying to take it the music direction. Like, no, we're not uh, doing that. Yeah, we're gonna boxing. We're we'll do boxing. I'm, I'm a boxer. <laughs> if you could Rappy. be any Marvel character, who would it be? Yeah. Oh, Star Lord. Uh the Guardians oh, yeah. of the Galaxy. That's he's a cool funny, one. you know, he's hilarious. And he gets he's got great friends. They're good pals. They all like each other. That's a good and one. And they and they shot their Christmas special at my house. Did they so really? I'm partial. They did. They really did. No lie. Guardians of the Galaxy's Christmas special. <laughs> it actually our home is Kevin Bacon's home. So Kevin Bacon's living at our house, but it's his house. So we so technically I live in the Kevin Bacon's house. It's in you know, the movie. I don't. I, it's it's anyway. This is rapid fire. I'm. I digress. Worlds are colliding here. Yeah. Holy cow! Seven degrees. You just did seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. I won Bacon the game right and here. You won the game. It's over. Yeah, it's over. You you won the game. You know me. You know? Holy cow! Favorite I'm the, board. I'm game. the degree away. <laughs> Favorite board game. What you got? Sorry. Time I rarely machine. win. I love that game though. My, my, I grew up playing with my grandparents. Yeah. We played over their house, so I've got like it's nostalgic. I like it. You know, Candyland is nostalgic for me, but my mom never let me win. Like I played Candyland with my mom all the time. She just demolished me. <laughs> it's like I don't know why you even play games it's, anymore. Hey, that builds character. Speaking of character, it does. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm best at though. I'm best at Connect Four. I can't be beaten at Connect Four. Really? I, I don't lose that game. No. Uh. -uh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm a champ. You have a time machine for one day. When and where do you go? The World's Fair um, in Chicago when electricity became a thing and the Ferris wheel was there. Yeah, that was a it was a it was a magical 
moment in time where you thought there was going to be, you know, dirigibles in the sky, you know, Zeppelin's taking us to <laughs> drop us off at the Empire State Building for a little meal on top of the building. It was, it, it was a, the world was wide open and, you know, there the lights came on in your life. I would like to be around for that deal. That's I incredible. I'm, that's a new one for me. You have a favorite cartoon growing up? Uh, well, yeah, it's Bugs Bunny. That was the yeah. uh, Saturday mornings, man. Bugs Bunny. It's that still good, a, too. That guy was a character. It holds up. It really holds up. The Tom and Jerry, they had a good run when they went to the uh, they went to Russian piano music, kind mm -hmm. of Russian <laughs> jazz for a second. That those are good. Those are that still holds up well too. Bugs Bunny is the Dale of cartoons. <laughs> it just <Absolutely>. works. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Would twelve year old up, David Doc? Crowder think you're cool today? <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> He, he knows better. He would know. He'd spy. you would be like, "All right, this bit, the beard's not doing nothing." I see you. I see you. Oh, I love it. And last but not least, something that you hate that everyone else loves. Okay, something you hate that everyone else loves. Um, it it would be oh that everybody else loves. Oh man, that's a, that is a tough one. Um, you know, I think it has to be. It has to be bubble baths. I think everybody okay. loves a bubble bath. I don't like a bubble bath. I like I a bath, but yeah. I don't like a bubble bath. What do you hate about it? Them? Just it gets in the way. Like, what do you when you're getting out? What do you got? It's just like what's like all this stuff all over you know. It's like <laughs> and then it's it's just and the bubbles are, it's gets in your eyes. It's not it's just not. You a can't good wash vibe. your hair. It's not a good vibe. Yeah, I agree. It's, I, it's greasy. You now you you feel. I I don't I don't hate a bubble. Now it's been a minute. <laughs> It's like, well, I may need to try it and see if I remember. <laughs> but um, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if I love them because of those same things. Okay. It's every, well, see, it's everywhere. I just assumed everybody loves a bubble bath. And I do then, think they I'm do. Like, I just, I want the plain bath. You know, I don't need that. Bu the bubbles are too much. It's too much. He's David Crowder here on Behind the Tunes. Check him out at CrowderMusic.com. David, you've been a ton of fun, man. Thanks for hopping on today. Hey, loved it, loved it, and can't wait to get that way. We're excited about it.